All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, my name is Taylor Bloom, and I'm the moderator for this panel. I'm the CEO of Sport Techie, and I'm joined by three awesome uh, tech and business leaders in the sports world, and you know, really, really happy to have them speaking to us for this uh, East Coast afternoon panel. Um, this or the title of this panel is Bridging the Digital and Physical Worlds, and uh, perhaps that's never been a more uh, apropos topic than, than right now as we're all joining you from our, our bedrooms and living rooms across the across the globe right now. Uh, so um, with that, Shinton, Nav, and Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Shinton Patel is the CTO of Cisco uh, UK and Ireland. Uh, Navin Singh is the Chief Commercial Officer for the USGA. And Andrew Shannon is the Director of Emerging Tech uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. I uh, really appreciate you joining us. Great to be here. Thanks, Frank. Right. We'd love to have you just kind of briefly introduce yourselves and, and kind of set the table. And uh, I guess I'll, I don't know, start an ABC order. Andrew, uh, just kind of give us a quick overview of your priorities, uh, your role for the Falcons and, and AMBSE overall. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so my responsibility as director of emerging technology is really to uh, to do two things. One is to introduce the two clubs, Atlanta United for MLS, Atlanta Falcons for NFL, and Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, to new novel technologies. Um, as many of you folks know in sports, um, sometimes we're late adopters. So a lot of times that's taking uh, technologies that have already been adopted in other industries and porting them over. Um, additionally, it's it's trying to take a novel approach to just pulling technologies into sports earlier. Um, that's for experience or otherwise. On um, two things, one is IoT, um, and that's really around the stadium and optimizing how we use it. The other is frictionless. You know, how do you m make a frictionless fan experience at every kind of point of the journey once they come into our property? Um, and yeah, that's uh, those are the, what I'm focused on right now. Love it. Thank you, Andrew. Chin, over to you. Same question, just kind of an overview intro, please. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Taylor. And uh, hi, everybody. It's uh, great to join you today. Um, so look, my role as, as kind of chief technologist uh, at Cisco here in the UK and Ireland is very much around, um, you know, helping our customers uh, and, and our partners in the industry at large navigate, you know, the unprecedented demands of connectivity, which, you know, clearly in, in today's day and age is, is become even more important to all of us. So, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to, to work uh, with some of our biggest organizations, both globally and here in the UK, um, that range from sports and entertainment to financial services to all industries and, and really help them on their journeys as they as they take digital technology into their organizations. So that's probably me in a nutshell for now. Great. Thanks, Shin. Navin? Yeah, thanks, Taylor, and a pleasure to be with everyone today. Uh, as Chief Commercial Officer of the United States Golf Association, I, I basically oversee all major revenue and commercial business uh, for the organization with particular emphasis on our championships. Uh, that uh, encompasses our broadcast production and media rights, uh, digital product development and digital distribution, uh, hospitality, admissions, merchandise, uh, the list goes on with some other uh, areas as well. Uh, and as it pertains to technology, I myself grew up in the digital media world and product development world. So as we continue to see a convergence between uh, broadcast and digital distribution and the increasing demands of uh, consumers of you know, wanting content, where they want it, how they want it, when they want it, uh, the notion of innovation and uh, bringing new technology to life uh, to serve um, the consumer purpose is definitely paramount here at the USGA. Awesome, guys. Thanks for those intros and, and setting the table. And um, obviously, we're in the middle of unprecedented times. That's why we're doing this virtually uh, from our, our living rooms. And uh, we're being forced to rethink so many aspects of our daily lives, the sports industry, um, and tech is playing an even more integral part uh, to our day-to-day -day activities than it, it ever has. And so, you know, this panel, Bridging the Digital and Physical World, is 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 right on topic for what we're all going through daily right now. And so I wanted to uh, chin and start off with you and just kind of pose the question, like, how is your team adapting to these extra digital times? Uh, what does your day-to-day -day look like? And, you know, how, how are you trying to kind of stay ahead of all of the just change that's happening right now? 
Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, I think the first thing to say is uh, we, we genuinely are in unprecedented times. Um, you know, I, I think it, it, it's fair to say, you know, the, the demands we're placing on infrastructure, on networks, on technology right now, nobody could have envisaged that. You know, it, 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 it's, it's um, you know, overnight, you know, whole countries are having to literally switch to home working. Um, and, you know, if, if anyone had, had been told you need to do that in 24 hours, you know, you, people would have laughed, right? But actually, we're having to do it, and we're able to do it. And I think that's a testament to actually a lot of the hard work that's gone into building out capacity and networks over the last decade um, and, and some of the innovations that the service providers have been doing. Um, you know, we've seen, for example, in certain parts of the Internet, you know, 50% growth. Um, but, you know, the Internet's coping. Right. Um, you know, we're able to do this. We're able to get thousands of people together. You know, companies with hundreds of thousands of employees, small and large, are being able to come online, allow their employees to work securely and remotely from home, allow their, their kids to be homeschooled uh, with remote learning um, and uh, for us to, to access entertainment. And uh, whether it be old footage of games and sports events uh, or movies, you know, we're, we're we're, we're able to actually cope with the with, with the kind of bandwidth requirements that uh, that are that are being put in place. I think um, the one thing that has happened is is you know our, our kind of busy a busy hour peak period you know would, would typically be sort of seven eight to eleven in the evening over the weekend. That's just stretched throughout the day now, and and I think that's the the additional pressure being put on the put on the systems around the world. But you know what we're doing certainly from our perspective, um, you know Cisco's at the heart of the internet, you know. Over 80% of the world's internet traffic touches our technology in one way, shape, or form. And we're working with service providers around the world to make sure that that backbone capacity is there, uh, you know, the infrastructure is there, that we're provisioning the capacity in the data centers, in the cloud providers, you know, across the board. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of work going on in the in the background. So I think it's just a big call out to everyone who's in IT, in one, you know, in one way, shape, or form. It's, uh, you know, this is this has been a really testing time for everybody and. Uh, I think it's a testament that we we're able to do all this with everything that's going on. I, I often think, like, imagine this happened a decade ago and everyone had to just live on their laptops for a, a, a week or a month or two months. Like, it, it just couldn't happen. Um, real quick, I see questions already starting to come in from attendees. Thank you. You can interact with speakers here. I'll do my best to scoop up as many good questions as I can and, and work them into our flow. Um, so that aside... Uh, Navin, kind of same question to you with, with the USGA. How are you guys trying to adapt right now? I know everyone's um, just trying to stay above water and, and be on as many Zoom communication calls as they can. Um, but but how's, how's it looking for you at, at USGA at this moment? Well, look, uh, I'm going to echo what, uh, what you said and Chinton said. I think it's we all acknowledge it's an unprecedented situation, and uh, we're flexing muscles that we haven't flexed before. Uh, and I think what we think about is – how, when we do come out of this, and we, we all will come out of this as a society, is that um, it's not going to be flipping a light switch. There's going to be a transition period. There is going to be a period of where we've already started to accelerate how we do things differently and integrate those new concepts and those new way of thinking and operating into what we were doing previously, I think, for the better. And it'll be interesting to see how those experiences uh, kind of translate when you marry the old world with the new world, so to speak. Uh, from our perspective of sports, um, the one thing that's never going to change about sports is it brings people together and it shares experiences. And whether you are on site or whether you're consuming from home, um, that's um, going to be, you know, never be more true than when we come back because people are going to take their time to come back. They're going to make choices about coming back. And that's where I think innovation and technology are going to play a critical role in integrating everyone um, back to that sense of togetherness. And, and we believe sport can be a rallying cry for that. And technology is going to be a rallying cry for that as well, because it's through that engagement is where we're going to have inspiration. And that's going to be the inspiration to go attend an event. It's going to be an inspiration to go see someone that face to face that you haven't seen in some time. It's going to be the inspiration to go participate in something that you haven't done in some time. You're going to have those touch points and you're going to stay connected in the meantime. And you're going to come out of this and you're going to aspire to do something. So I, I think that's what we're thinking about is that from the USJ perspective, how do we continue to inspire? through all these digital and virtual means, uh, leveraging technology to do so, uh, while thinking about for the future, how technology is gonna play a role in helping everybody get back um, to normal once we get through this. Mm. And Andrew, you're the director of emerging tech for a team that has one of the more 
in my opinion, just impressive venues in the world. And how are you trying to kind of organize your tech strategies and communication strategies at this point? And, you know, same question I posed to Chinson and Navin to you. Are you guys just living in, in WebEx and, and trying to get a, a hold of everything? How is this working out? Yeah, so um, so for us, we've seen um, almost the entirety of the organization. Uh, our, I'll say, our team's adoption. We use we're a Microsoft shop uh, has has gone up substantially. Um, uh, in fact, so much so that we've we've seen like ninety five percent of all AMBSC full time associates uh, concurrently using Teams at one time, which uh, you know six months ago we would have not thought possible. Um, you know, we work for a really special owner in Arthur Blank. Um, so, so, you know, the couple that I'll say that, you know, everything I'll, I'll echo what Navin and Chinton said, but, you know, for us, um, we've looked at this as a time to try to really hit the ground running with getting the stadium ready for being back online, whenever that may be. Um, you know, we, we're looking, we're exploring digital experiences um, that are that are able to connect our season ticket members and their families with players and coaches. Um, we've just kind of gotten into the podcast business uh, as recently as this week um, with the director of digital for Atlanta United. And we're certainly exploring other avenues, whether it be through gaming, whether it be through um, new, you know, digital experiences where we can kind of connect someone from their living room to um, our, our clubs in one form or another. Um, we're, we're really deeply looking at what those things could look like. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're taking this as an, we're using this as an exercise to try to think through what the experience may be like when we come back. And obviously, um, you know, it remains to be seen when that will be, and it remains to be seen um, under what circumstances that'll kind of take shape in. Uh, but what I can tell you is that we're deeply thinking right now about the investments that we need to make uh, to get ready for that. Whether that's, you know, for us, Things that are top of mind include um, exploring technologies that reduce the need for a staff member to have to come in contact with a fan. So just trying to look at frictionless security experiences, um, looking at how we can drive things like NFC payments and just greater adoption of that in the stadium so less credit cards have to be you know, handed from one person to another. Um, and then even more broadly, um, you know, the other thing we're kind of looking at right now is, is you know, how might this evolve the fan experience in the future, um, you know, one, two years three years down right now it's a speculation exercise but what we're trying to do is kind of model different scenarios and just look at the types of investments we need to make to prepare for them so it's really a time of strategizing um finding new ways to connect fans uh and then you know getting the foundational stuff right such that when we're ready to come back online uh or when the sports world is ready to come back online we're ready to meet them hmm. Andrew, that's a good segue for my next question. I'll go back to, to Chin with this. As you kind of look out to the future as best you can right now, what are you saying um, are critical priorities for companies, teams, leagues, and venues to try to be at the forefront of? Yeah, look, I think um, echo what Navin said, right? We will get back. Uh, we will come out of this. Um, obviously, when is the question? But, you know, I think the, the important point is this is, a, this is a really good time to think about, you know, what will we do? What will we put in place now that will help us um, with the expectations uh, that, you know, our constituents and our customers will have uh, and our fans will have? Um, when we do get back and, and, you know, that flexibility to be able to do things, the, the speed at which we actually enable people to access, you know, new tech um, and new experiences in the venues or, or things that we operate in are going to be absolutely, absolutely critical. I mean, um, you know, I think some of our work uh, with the USGA at the US Open last year is, is a great example of that, right, at, at Pebble Beach. I mean, I think you would, you know, with their knowledge of, of, um, uh, of sport and golf and our technical know-how to actually create a connected golf course, which, you know, fundamentally shifted the thinking of what could be possible, right? I mean, imagine putting Wi-Fi at the edge of an ocean across 200 acres, right, in less than a month. You know, it's not a small feat. Um, but that meant that fans could be connected in a completely new way that they, they, they just couldn't before, right? And it speaks to the possibility that actually technology does, technology has. Um, I, I think you also saw that when you deliver that connectivity, when you deliver that opportunity for people to experience things in different ways, they, they create data in a, in a completely different way than you could have ever imagined. I mean, you know, the Wi-Fi network at, the, at Pebble Beach saw, I think it was something like 25 terabits of data uh, during the championship, which, you know, when you compare it, that's more than the Super Bowl in 2019. 
So, you know, it just meant that actually people want to be connected when they're at these uh, these events and at these experiences. Um, and actually, if you deliver the the applications that enable them to get a better experience, find things what they find the things that they need when they need it, uh, get real time data on what's happening um, uh, using some of the analytics that are now available. You know, you can really create something that's new. And we're you know we're seeing that this is this is this will be the new norm, right? I think people getting used to using digital technology, people working from home using video. Um, I mean, just you know, as an example, we mentioned WebEx, right? I mean, just in just this month alone, so far, we've had over 10 billion minutes of meetings that have taken place globally, and just rapidly increasing. It, it's uh, um, we've effectively built another complete platform just to support our customers and society at large. So you know, you can imagine we're we're, we're going to expect this to be available to us, and expect that you know the the speeds, the accessibility will all be there. You know, we we often projected you know, some of this type of scale happening over a three to five year period. This has just happened in a couple of months, you know, so uh, it, it's fascinating to see where we'll end up. Hmm. Janelle, when the stats get so big, you can't quite comprehend it. I don't know what 10 billion minutes means. How many movies is that? That's just crazy to, to think about. It's interesting you're talking about the acceleration of, you kind of plan for that to happen three to five years from now, but it happened now. And so you're, you're kind of just having to ramp up and be prepared for that. Um, hmm. No, and Shinton mentioned the, the connected course and their partnership with um, you know your team at the USGA. Can you build on that a little bit and tell us more about how that connected course experience went at Pebble Beach and then where you're hoping it continues to go? Is you know like Chin was saying, the world gets more digital, more connected. Right. Um, let me go back and reference something Andrew uh, mentioned earlier in this conversation that that sports typically lags behind, kind of where emerging tech is in, in, in terms of overall business. Let me clarify and say that golf lags behind sport normally and to where things are. And five years ago, we didn't even have, we didn't allow people to have mobile phones uh, on the golf course. And I think uh, referencing back to what we were able to accomplish with Cisco and, and I think about what 200 acres means in terms of a space, you know, guys, this is not um, a fixed structure. We're doing this, we're, we're coming in for a couple weeks of the year and, you know, creating this massive infrastructure that supports over a hundred thousand connections throughout the course of the week. And what really gets me excited is we're just scratching the surface. That was year one of our partnership with Cisco and what we were able to accomplish in the first year. And I think about what the future can hold. I just think about once again, it all starts with the consumer. The consumer is telling us what they want. They want to be able to have their phone with them uh, at all times and consume what you know while they are watching live sport what else are they getting to complement that experience on site and then when you're at home how many people use multiple devices they have that phone in their hand all the time otherwise they may have their tablet while they're watching the television and they're augmenting their experience they're telling us that they want more the, the key for us is continuing to understand what they want and that's where we look at a partner like cisco and think about okay how do we bring that to life how do we increase that engagement you know we've We've invested heavily in live streaming bonus feeds to complement the core broadcast feed. We launched an OTT product uh, last year. And now when you think about where everyone is being you know, sequestered in their houses, everyone's predicting that you know, binge watching, the consumption on these digital channels is going to go up anywhere from 30 or 40 to 60% uh, maybe for some of these products. And the fact that uh, we're able to now you know, be prepared to A, start serving those needs and B, start identifying where the next level of needs is going to be. Where, where it's going to be for golf particularly is the fact that uh, you have so many players playing, you have so much r data available to you. How do you present that data in a meaningful and compelling way in a real time manner um, that allows consumers to really augment their experience? I think that's where the key opportunity is. So it's going to be around live streaming. It's going to be around connected devices. It's going to be around leveraging data as, as a piece of content to augment the experience. Andrew, and building on what now we just talked about, I, I, I draw down a quick note of the live sport experience and how it's augmented, and that's uh, that's not a new trend. Everyone's been talking about it and pushing on this, and and you know what Chin and, and Navin are talking about is where is this going? Here's some examples we've had in the past, and how it's just going to be more digitally connected. What are you doing to either survey fans or just kind of look around the space and you know to your title, look at emerging technologies to try to say, hey, my my experience as a fan will 
uh, be changing in the next few years when I'm entering Mercedes-Benz Stadium? How are you trying to stay ahead of those you know, demands from fans uh, as Chin and Nam have laid out? Like the, the whole digital connectedness of sporting events is changing. And I'm curious how you go, to, uh, go about evaluating that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting when I think of, when I think of like what we offer, right. Um, especially at the stadium, the live sporting event, which admittedly is distinctly different than watching from your house. We understand all the, the reasons why some want to do that, but, you know, being there and being within in that moment is, 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 is so uh, there's, there's something special. You can't recreate it. That being able to say like, I was there for this thing at that moment, that play, whatever it is. Um, so for us, a lot of what we're focused on is using technology to actually remove all the barriers for when you're at the stadium from getting to experience that thing. So it may almost sound counterintuitive as opposed to, um, you know, getting into the debate of like, should we be increasing your you know, usage of your phone when you can see the field, um, you know, versus, versus not, uh, you know, for us, it's about how do we, how do we take all the, the, the shitty experiences that you can have at a live sporting event and get rid of them. Downs in lines, long lines, um, you know, repetitive stuff. We have season ticket members. They, they do a lot of the same things every week. Um, can we help automate some of that? Can we predict where they might, what they might want, what they might need, um, proactively serve those things to them? Um, you know, for us, it's all about how do we get rid of, of kind of the, the gunk, um, is we, as one model we employ in our organization, um, we use the Kano model, which is a, like, I come for product development. I work for an innovator in the NFL. Um, you know, we look at the Kano model, which basically has delighters, things that you invest in performance features that are things that like people expect and, and they're nice. Uh, and then, and then kind of table stakes. Um, and what we have kind of, as we've looked across and we've tried to do some design thinking in, in our experience, what we see a lot of the time is that the basics or the table stakes stuff aren't always met. Like if you walk in and you wait in 15 minutes in a line and you've got to get your purse searched and you pat it down, like we're not, like that's not delivering a world-class experience anywhere else other than the airport, it, that's unacceptable. And so what we're trying to do is really pull some of that gunk out to free people up. Now, to go to the digital side of your question, um, you know, we do think that that uh, there are some industries that are doing some really novel things here. Um, you know, I, we look at a partner of ours in Delta. They um, announced at CES this year a parallel reality experience. Like we've been kind of beating around this bush of being able to have like personalized experiences while you're in the stadium. Um, they're focused on kind of wayfinding and getting you the use. Us, this could be player information. It could be experiences while you're waiting in line to give you what's happening with Julio Jones or Joseph Martinez. Um, and so we're kind of we're we're noodling on that, and I think we're going to be doing some pilots that will help us explore it. Uh, but for right now, those are the two things I would, I would kind of talk about is to, in response to your question. Thank you, Andrew. And Navin, do you want to build on that? Well, look, when you talk about the you know the opportunities on site, uh, I mean, I look at it from a golf perspective, and I say we have. 18 unique stadiums, you know, not just one. And uh, as Andrew um, mentioned, I'll reiterate, you got to first eliminate the clutter. And that's part of the, you know, that journey, that fan journey from the moment that you park, uh, the moment you go on the bus and you arrive at, at the uh, at the venue itself, what that journey looks like. How are you um, reducing the clutter and giving them really what what they need and what matters? There's so much data, information, contents is available. It's really important to think about what is it that matters the most at the right point in time. And then when you are on site, thinking of the fact that we have 18 unique stadiums uh, is, and, and it's fact it's not um, fixed structure, but it is um, this open space, is how am I able to serve uh, that consumer so they can feel comfortable in one part of the, of the venue and still not miss uh, anything important that's occurring throughout. And with us, you know, we've talked to Cisco about using Cisco Vision technology, which we piloted a bit last year and want to do more of as it pertains to being able to localize. Localize for someone that's on hole number 18, they're not missing anything that's happening earlier through unique programming to that area of the venue through you know video board technology. Or it could be as something as simple as understanding that personalized mobile ticket and being able to target offers or be able to super serve a premium uh, seated fan uh, based where they are in venue. So I think 
the notion of what we can do with venues and marrying that with fans and remembering it first and foremost, it is about the fan experience. And it's not about introducing technology for technology's sake, but it's leveraging the best of what we can with technology to really serve a need of a consumer because that is what's going to bring them that back. That's what's going to allow all of us to deepen the relationship to actually um, get to that phrase where all boats will rise as a result, whether it be Cisco or any of the other partners of the USGA uh, at large. I think that's where technology um, becomes the backbone of deepening the relationship. Hmm. You guys are doing all the segues for me. Chin, I was going to take that um, uh, concepts Navin just brought up of, you know, delivering what the, the fans are ultimately looking to have delivered uh, in whatever robust digital environment that is. In one of our, our briefing calls for this panel, Navin, um, or sorry, Chin, we talked about the venue being a media platform. Yeah. And I want to dive into that with our last kind of eight minutes here, because I think that's so critical. We're talking about all these great digital experiences, et cetera, but the venue or the golf course, they're massive media platforms. How do you see that uh, just continuing to accelerate in the next, you know, one, two, three years, uh, a time and how is Cisco kind of adapting for that? Yeah, look, I completely agree with the, what, what the guys have said, right? So I think, you know, venues are becoming, um, are, are the, the media platform now. I think, uh, if you look at across the world, um, and, and, and different types of venues and environments there, you know, the, the demand for the, the, for the, for the users and the, the experiences that they want, um, kind of, means that organizations have to put that in place, right? I mean, it, it's table stakes now that, that you have that connectivity, you are providing that digital experience, that you're designing it not just for inside, but outside the arena as well. You know, that experience inside the arena or uh, the stadia or the golf course um, actually stems from the moment people leave home, right? And and, and, and when they book, make that booking, they, they travel, they come in, you know, and the experience they get end to end. So it's it, it's not even just inside the venue. It's it's that whole end to end experience. And I think, you know, some of the digital technologies I think um, uh, that the team talked about really help to do that because it's it's kind of for me it falls into three areas. One, it's you know, it's all about the convenience that you deliver uh, because that's that's absolutely key. It's it's about the customization because then that's the thing that people remember. I you know it, it, it's all about um, how you're delivering a customized service for them. And then finally, kind of that personalization piece. You know, it, it really narrows it down to the things that I need. You know, as a as a as a fan, because my needs are going to be different. And 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 I think this is where whether it's you know digital vision, Cisco vision technology that we Navin talked about that it helps us do some of that personalization. Whether it's the Wi-Fi analytics. Uh, which we can now use, whether it's the apps you can deliver, um, that's all there, right? And and I think you know where, you know, to to Andrew's point, you know, the the, the that physical experience you, you can't produce elsewhere, and you know it's those moments that matter, which people will remember. And so I think if you can if you can make sure when when people are there that they they don't miss a moment using the technology that you have around you then you know i think you're onto onto something that would be really compelling for 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 your fans and and i think that that's where that's where organizations are really placing their bets in terms of you know what are the what are, how do we make sure we we deliver that fan experience on site off site together um and deliver it in a seamless way hmm. andrew do you want to build on that yeah so um you know everything uh, Chen just said is is, is spot on. I, I think that um, for having a single structure like we have in Mercedes-Benz Stadiums, um, one of the in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, one of the other things that's really interesting to us is how we start to leverage five um, uh, G to potentially offload some of the core experiences that get stuck. Um, you know, it's it's heavy lift on our IT staff um, to take on managing all the different workloads. Um, that sponsors and partners and everyone else will kind of bring onto our network. And while we've got an incredibly rich Wi-Fi network on site and we'll continue to invest in it, um, you know, we're also anxious to see as cell towers um, start to leverage some of the, the pace that they've got on and some of the networking equipment, some stuff that I'm sure is built by Cisco. Uh, but, you know, looking at if we can have fixed uh, infrastructure on the nearest one, two, or three cell towers to our stadium, can we actually push some of those experiences that would typically be on our corporate network and offload them? Um, and so to me, that one starts to free up a lot of these experiences. It also helps reduce the management and overhead we've got on our staff. 
Um, so that's that's one side of this. Uh, the other side of this, though, is um, you know I think that this notion of like augmented reality and virtual reality, like, you know, the hype cycle that it's gone through. Um, you know, we're we're starting to see, especially as people have kind of come home through dealing with COVID, that augmented and virtual reality are starting to pop. And what's interesting is, does that become a water? Does this moment become a watershed moment for? kind of these two technologies that hold so much potential, but really haven't got the adoption that, you know, people have expected at this point. Um, and if it does, how do we translate that to digital experiences that we can deliver, whether it's mixed reality, augmented reality, or virtual reality? Um, you know, the last thing I'll say, I saw somebody asked a question earlier about what we're doing with augmented and virtual reality. Atlanta United has been, we have like a full AR VR uh, strategy um, that we've that we've built out. Um, and those are experiences that we'll continue to invest in. I think it's really been a, the limitation for us is scaling to fans with hardware at home and having cohesive platforms where stuff will all work together. Um, we're, we're, we're interested and anxious to see what this period does to, to free that up and allow us to deliver more of those experiences. Thanks for that, Andrew. And, and in that uh, same vein, like looking at what this current period does for what we all do moving forward, um, a question from one of our attendees, Brian from Colorado, thank you, he said during this void, entities across the board have uh, gotten to be creative, had to take advantage of opportunity to keep fans engaged in you know, really ways they've never had to try to do before. Um, how does this further evolve once live sports return and people go back to the course or the pitch or the field? Is there anything that teams and leagues and you know, broadcast tech partners have learned while it's like, hey, no sports are going on, but we still have to keep fans engaged. Is there anything that they've learned that can be taken to the schedule once it's back up and running? And Nam, and I guess I would pose that to you first, but guys, I'd love for each of you to jump in. I think for me, it's going back to what I mentioned earlier, this is going to accelerate thought and implementation of ideas that we already had on our roadmap, because now those ideas are becoming priority and we're going to learn very quickly uh, that, you know, we, you know, we did, you know, consumer studies to identify these as opportunities. Now we're really focused on them. And now it's how you integrate them back into the core experience. Ultimately, uh, what we want to do is we want to inspire people. We want to inspire people to watch more, to consume more, and ultimately play more golf. All right. That, that's, that's our mission is to make sure that that experience is holistic 52 weeks of the year and culminates uh, from our perspective in celebrating golf one week of the year during the U.S. Open and another week of the year during the Women's Open. And the fact that we conduct championships that truly are um, at the pinnacle of each unique uh, competitor's flight. And that's the way we look at it, as those are seminal moments to inspire. And in this point in time, in absence of the of live sport going on, it's how do you leverage uh, content and how do you leverage uh, integrated and interactive technology to continue to inspire and then weave that back into your core value proposition once uh, we're back live and running. And we will be all back live and running. Thanks, Navin. Uh, Andrew, uh, from your team perspective, any thoughts on that? What are we learning now that can be applied to when things go back to kind of a new normal? Um, you know, it remains to be seen which um, uh, tactics and strategies are going to work the best. Um, I can tell you that this is a every virtually every person in our company is thinking about this right now. Um, what are different ideas? What are different you know things that we can employ to, to engage fans in new ways? Um, what I, well, I can't say which things are gonna be the right ones. What I can tell you is that I think two things will be truths. The first is that whatever does show to be effective will continue to be weaved into the sports experience. I don't think what happens for the next, you know, X many days is just gonna die when sports comes back. Um, so that's the first thing. This, the second truth I believe we'll find with all of this is that um, digital fandom and, and harnessing avidity uh, in times like the kind of unprecedented ones that we're in um, is going to continue to be something that we invest in and, and, and try to, to facilitate. Um, and and while that may be bi-directional, it may be, you know, right now we have content platforms where it's sort of unidirectional. We're going to fans and we're leaving them with the thing. Um, I could certainly see bi-directional communication coming out of that, letting fans engage more, finding new platforms um, to kind of get in and express what they're passionate about. Um, I think those two things will be true by the time we, we get through this. 
Thank you, Andrew. Chin, we'll, we'll close with you. And I would say, if you, if you want to respond to that question, great. And then just a uh, quick question for yeah. you. Um, you may respond in 10 seconds. Your CTO is Cisco UK and, and Ireland. I mean, you're, you're helping run uh, a company that's helping connect the world right now when the world needs to be connected more than ever. Any bright spots you're seeing? Anything that's really surprised you in a really positive way that just was unexpected? I think you have a really unique perspective. I wanted to kind of end on a, a interesting positive note there as we're all uh, you know, tuning in digitally and sitting in historic times. Hey, look, I, I think I'd just say, look, you know, things that we couldn't think uh, could be possible are being made possible. And, and I think that's that's the the really um, heartwarming thing in terms of when we put our mind to it, we can do the the, the unexpected, as it were, and we're seeing that. I think, uh, you know, the positivity from a, a, a sports and, and an entertainment world perspective, I think, you know, I'm a fan and, and the you know, as a sports fan of many things from golf to soccer to football, as we call it, um, you know, uh, NBA, you, you name it, you know, um, I, I'm a fan personally. And what I'm doing right now, like many other people, is is watching those key players uh, online, playing each other on virtual games, etc. And And I think uh, um, all those teams competing with each other in, in different formats and I think we'll probably have this expectation when we do get back, as Navin says, I fundamentally do believe we will get back to a time, um, you know, sooner than than, than, than we ha than we think, uh, back to normality. Um, is I think uh, to Andrew's point as well, we'll, we'll expect those things because I'd like to continue to see uh, those two sporting greats competing with, with each other on that digital platform, uh, and you know, the, the building that competitiveness. So uh, I think we'll continue to see that. I think top of mind for us is. You know what are we what are we doing to just make sure everybody is securely connected? You know, this time I think you know we've got to make sure uh, people and the communities around us are, are securely connected and able to access the critical services. Uh, so you know that's our number one priority around the world uh, is making sure both organisations, small and large, have that, um, and and it will continue to focus on that. But you know the innovation will come right, uh, and I think this this sort of maybe quiet period. Uh, to Andrew and Navin's point, I think some bright ideas are being built up, right, in terms of new things. The innovators like Andrew and Navin, are, are they're, they're there, their brains are ticking in terms of, you know, what can we do differently uh, for our venues, for our industries? And, um, you know, we're already seeing lots of examples of that around the world. So I, th I think the future's bright. I think we're, we'll see more. Um, I just think it will be, this will be the new norm. And, uh, you know, it's hopefully going to be an exciting time. Well, Chin, Andrew, Navin, thanks so much for joining us. It was, it, was a, it was a treat to chat with the three of you. Thank you for coordinating time zones and, and making it work. Um, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in from around the world and uh, submitted questions. We encourage you to continue to interact through the virtual conference and, and uh, enjoy the show. So thank you, gentlemen. Talk to you later and be well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye.